Masechet Ketubot Daf Lamed Chet. We got a head start on this Daf already, so we should be uh, not too long. Uh, all right, we're talking about the definition of who should get the payment of a fine uh, when a young girl is raped or seduced. Uh, the Pasuk itself gives uh, three uh, limitations. Kima Se Ish Na'ara. So it has to be a Na'ara, meaning what the rabbis understand is that means from 12 to 12 and a half. We saw Machlok at whether uh, a girl younger would get a would get the fine or not. That's one. Betula, betula, and not beula. She has, to, has she has. It can't be that she ever had relations before. Ashelo orasa, who is not engaged. Uh, now, if she actually is currently engaged slash married to someone as a naara, uh, then and this man uh, takes her, then he. Uh, rapes her, then he will get the death penalty because that would be adultery. So, um, uh, so we have to see what this ashe lo orasa comes to add, right? It can't be that they're that uh, un, uh, unlike. Uh, um, not, it can't be that is excluding someone who is currently actually married. So that's what our Mishnah is talking about. Na adash nit adesa venit gadesha. So Mishnah asks this question: What if uh, you have a girl? Between twelve and twelve and a half, who did do kiddushin but never went through the nisuin, so therefore the marriage was never consummated. We can assume that he never touched her. She is still a betula, and now she gets divorced. Um, you know, within the six months, and she now is raped by a man. Uh, after that, does uh, does she get does she get the does he have to pay a fine or not? Since she, um, uh, Pasuk says, but she had been, uh, she had been engaged. So it's a machlok. No, sorry, no, kenas. The Pasuk only says that he pays the fine if she was never engaged, but she was engaged and divorced. No fine. Uh, even though she is likely still a betula. Rabbi Akiva Omer Yesh la Kenas Uknasah leAtzma. Rabbi Akiva says she nevertheless gets a Kenas. Uh, but so why does the pasuk say Asher lo Orasa? Oh, if she was never engaged, then the fine goes to the father, uh, as the rest of the pasuk says. Benatan Aish Hashem Al Abi Hanaara. So if she was never engaged, then the father of the victim collects the fine. But if she had been engaged. And divorced, so that she is still a betula. So then, what? There is still a fine according to the Akiba, except that she gets to keep it, and it doesn't go to her father. All right, that's the Mishnah. Gemara is going to explain how they each uh, treat the pesukim. My Tamad Rabbi Yosei Galili. What's the source of Rabbi Yosei Galili that there is no kenas amad keda ashelo orasa ha orasa and la kenas? It only says that if she had never been engaged. Then she uh, he pays the fine to the father, um, but if she had been uh, engaged, even if she was divorced after, sorry, no kenas at all. He doesn't pay anything. All right. So, but Rabbi Akiva says no. The word ashelo orasa is going on the continuation. If she had never been engaged, then he pay the the rapist pays the father. But if she had been engaged. He still pays, it's just that it doesn't go to the father anymore. Now it goes to her. All right. Now, Ela me'ata, na'ara velo bogedet. Hachina me'edele atzma. Hold on. Question to Rabbi Akiva. According to your reading, that these, these phrases, limitations phrase, these limitation uh, definitions are going, uh, are telling us not whether he pays or not, but rather who gets the money. So, if it's uh, the word na'ara in the Pasuk, right? You might say, Ish na, she has to be na'ara. Now, what if she's not a na'ara? What if she's already 12 and a half? She's already an adult? Uh, so, then what? Would you say the same thing? Oh, only when she's a na'ara, then the money goes to the father. But if she's an adult, he still has to pay. But the m- m- money goes to her. Would you interpret it that way? The problem is that there's nobody, said, no, nobody says that. I mean, theoretically, I guess it could be a possible reading. But in fact, nobody says that. Everyone agrees that once a woman is a bogedet, then this fine does not apply at all. Betula velo beola, hachiname de lasma. And furthermore, the other definition uh, in the pasuk that she has to be a betula. 
So you're going to say that if she is a bitula, then the rapist pays the father. And if she is not a bitula, then what? He still pays, but he pays her herself? I mean, that really wouldn't make sense because this whole fine is connected to, is dependent on the, her, that, the fact that she had bitulim and now he caused her to lose the bitulim. And so this is payment for the, uh, uh, the loss of that uh, bride price that the father would get. That's, that's why the father uh, normally would get this amount because he's losing out on that amount that he would normally get when he marries off his daughter. So these, Rabbi uh, Akiba, according to your methodology, you would have to say that in these cases also, she gets it and not the father, but that he still has to pay. And that's impossible. Rather, the Bio says explanation makes much more sense that uh, when it says Asher Lord Asa, if she had never been engaged, then he pays the father. And if she had been engaged, or if she is a Bogeret, or if she is a Be'ula, then he does not pay at all. Okay, now, uh, so now we support Rabbi Yosef. How would Rabbi Akiba defend himself? Oh, so as follows. Amar lach Rabbi Akiba. Rabbi Akiva could tell you that the word lo orasa is needed for a different thing, which is in the following baraita. Now, the following, uh, Rabbi Akiva is not saying this. Rabbi Akiva could have said this. Rabbi Akiva can't say this because we're about to quote a baraita, which includes Rabbi Osegli and Rabbi Akiva. So Rabbi Akiva would not be quoting a baraita, quoting himself. Uh, but rather, we are going to answer for Rabbi Akiva with another Braita. So heads up, this Braita does not agree with the Mishnah. So this is going to be a little confusing. We're going to end up saying that there's actually two different uh, traditions in the name of Rabbi Akiva. So we're going to answer the question according to the following tradition. So let's see. All right, so this is clear. This is the same Rabbi Yoseh, same opinion as in the Mishnah. And uh, here it gives the full explanation. The Pasuk says that he pays the fine to the father when she had not been engaged. But if she had been engaged and she got divorced, then there is no fine at all. Good, that's Rabbi Yoseh Galidi. Rabbi Akiva Omer, Yesh la kanas, u kanas ala uh, There is a kanas, and the kanas goes to the father. Goes to the father. Even if she had been in, uh, uh, d- engaged and divorced, this still goes to the father. So you see that this is different from the opinion in the Mishnah. Okay, now this, uh, and what's Rabbi Akiva's reasoning? Uh, you see, according to this, he doesn't need, ashe, he's not going to use Asher Lo to teach that the father doesn't get it, she gets it. Because according to this, even if she was engaged and divorced, the father still gets it. And he's going to explain in a second what, he, what else he does with Asher Lo Orasa. All right, Vadin no ten. And why should this be? Why should the father get the fine, even though she was already engaged? Ho'il ve'avi ha'zakai be'kesef kiddushia. Ve'avi ha'zakai be'kesef kenasa. Ma kesef kiddushia. Afal pish nit arasav nit karasha le'avi Af kesef kenasa. Afal pish nit arasav nit karasha le'avi We're going to compare it to the kiddushin money itself. When a father marries off his daughter and she's uh, she's not yet an adult, then he gets the money. He gets the money of Kiddushin. So since he gets the money of Kiddushin, it makes sense that he should receive the fine as well. Um, now he's not going to get, you know, he's, he's, he's losing out on his daughter being a betula. He's not going to get as much money, so he gets the fine instead. So it makes sense that he will be the recipient of Kiddushin and the fine. Now, let's compare them further. Just like in Kesef Kiddushin, even if a young girl was engaged and divorced and then gets engaged again, so, uh, the father still gets, the, on the second time around, the father still gets the Kiddushin money. So too, even if a girl is engaged and divorced, uh, they fine and then, and then uh, uh, raped, the father still gets the money. Okay, so that that makes sense. Rabbi Akibaz is explaining. And again, this is only the Braita's version where the father gets the money in any case. All right, so now in this version we ask, Imken, ashe lo orasa. So what do you need this word, ashe lo orasa, uh, if it doesn't matter whether she got engaged or not, according to Rabbi Akiva, whether she had been engaged or whether, whether, whether she never got engaged or whether she had been engaged and divorced, she's currently engaged, that's a different matter, because then it was adultery. 
but whether or not she had been engaged before it doesn't make a difference. So this whole phrase is superfluous. So what is it here for? Mufne la kishlo. It's extra. It is in fact superfluous. So we can make a analogy. It says here regarding the rape case that she had not been engaged. I'm saying the word engaged. But everybody knows that engaged doesn't mean our modern uh, term of uh, when we have an engagement party, but rather official kiddushin, which is uh, almost uh, the strength of marriage. You need a get and it would be adultery if, uh, if uh, she uh, is not faithful. Okay. Um, so it says here, and it also says by the case of seduction in Shemot, the parallel case where also the seducer has to pay a fine because the Torah treats uh, seduction of a uh, minor to be the same as raping her. Uh, it says also there, Ashelo Orasa. So why does it connect these? These are extra words. They, we don't need them for the context at all because it makes no difference whether she was engaged or not. The, he still pays the fine and the fine still goes to the father. So the Gezerah Shavah teaches, as we, as we have seen earlier, Makan Hamishim, Afdehalan Hamishim, Umalalan Shekalim, Afkan Shekalim. In one context, it says that it's Hamishim. We know that it's 50. In the other context, it tells us that it's Shekel. So we need both of them. Because if you only had one, I know that the denomination is Shekel, Shekalim, but I don't know how many. And if I only had the other one, I know that it's 50, but I don't know 50 what's, what denomination. So we, by putting the two uh, laws together, um, uh, so it says the word shekel regarding the seduction. Uh, so I know that there's shekelim. It says 50 regarding the um, uh, rape. So then I, they're the same. I put them together. That's what the Akiva does with that extra pasuk. All right, good. Now, Rebbe Akiva, my hazita ashelo orasa ligzera shava ubetula lemaute beula. Now, Rebbe Akiva, we want to understand your methodology better. Uh, why did you choose, the, right, we saw this three limitation phrases of uh, exact, the exact uh, category of girl that this applies to. Um, how come you chose the phrase, Ashelo Orasa, to be extra and to compare to know what the uh, amount of money is? And Betula, that you take literally, that she has to be a Betula, and if she's a Beola, then there's no fine. That's what you said about Kiva. But that seems arbitrary. Why don't you do the other way around? Emma betula ligizera shava. So say, use the betula. Betula also appears in both places. So use the word betula so that you know the amount of money. And then apply asher orasa like Rabbi Yose HaGalili did and say that if she, only if she had never been engaged, then he pays the fine to the father. If she had been engaged, even if she was divorced, then there's no fine at all. So you, so you, you could equally do that. Uh, Gemara S answers, Vista bera shelo orasa ligzera shava. Shera ni koreba na'ara betula. It makes more sense that the Ashelo Orasa would be the extra words, and I'm going to use that for Gezer Shava. Because even if a girl is uh, engaged and divorced, I would still call her a Nara Betula, because she, we assume she's still a Betula, even though she had been engaged. She was never married, was never consummated. And so it's easier to read the Pasuk that way. And then we ask, no, Adraba, Betula, Ligzer Shava, Sharin Koreba, Ashelo Orasa. No, it's equal, it reads equally smoothly the other way. If I use the betula as a gezerah shava, and according to that, since the betula is used for gezerah shava, that would mean that a woman who is a beula, meaning outside the context of marriage, she was not in an outside engagement or marriage, uh, she engaged in promiscuous activity, and she's no longer a betula, but a beula, she would still receive the fine, according to this. And that would read smoothly because Ashelo Rasa, that would be true. A girl, it could be that a girl was never engaged, and yet she's not a Betula anymore if she engaged in relations outside of marriage altogether. Uh, so you can read it, you can read the Pasuk either way, and it would be logical. So therefore, back to the, back to the question, why'd you choose one criteria over the other? And use Shelo uh, Rasa as a Gezerah Shava, and then say that if, some, if she was engaged and married, then uh, there um, is still a fine because you read this pasuk away. Uh, and so you know what? We are, you're right. Really, syntactically, we could read the pasuk either way, 
but this is conceptual. If a woman uh, engages prom promiscuous activity, it's no longer, or anyway, if she's not a bitula, her body changed. She no longer has her bitulim. And so there, it makes more sense to say the law changes also, and now, and now he doesn't pay the fine. Whereas, if she just got engaged and then got divorced, right, nothing changed in her body. She, had a, she, she entered into a legal status, and then now another legal status of being a divorcee, uh, but since nothing, uh, it's only a legal change, not a physical change in her body, uh, therefore it makes sense that the law would not change, would change less for a legal change as for a physical change in her body. Okay, good. So now we've, uh, uh, we understand the Biakiba in the Beraita, uh, and, uh, what he does, he says that, uh, a, a woman only gets the fine if she had never been engaged, uh, then the fine goes to the, uh, the fine goes to the father, and if she had been engaged and um, if she had been engaged and uh, divorced, then the fine still goes to the father. That's uh, the, and the Braita. The, it goes to the father no matter what. According to that, Asher lo orasa. What are you going to do with that work with the pasuk? Oh, we take that out of context altogether. That's just for a gezer hashava. Fine. Now, Rabbi Yosei Galili, Hai Sevara Minale, Rabbi Yosei Galili doesn't. Ha, where where does he where does he derive this same conclusion from about the amount of payment uh, for seduction and rape that has to be fifty shekel? If he doesn't he doesn't use this pasuk Asher Lo Rasa VeGezer Shava, he uses it for the peshat that she has to be she was never engaged. So where is he going to learn this the amount from? Nafkale Midetanya Kesef Yishkol Kemohar. Habitulot. Regarding the case of uh, seduction, it says he will pay the amount of the dowry that a bitula would normally get. Right. So that's the connection here. That that's why it depends dependent on her being a uh, being a bitula. So these words tell us that the amount is good. This amount is going to be the same as mohar bitulot, which we know from rape is fifty. Um, and the other way around also, that 50 is what denomination is going to be shekalim, like it says here. So the mohar betulot is the key word that says, um, both these cases, she has to be a betula, and now she lost her betulim, so she lost her dowry that virgins usually get, and, uh, that, that definition, uh, applies to both, and that brings the two laws together to say 50 shekalim. Okay, good. So we've solved, uh, we understand to be Oseha Galili and where he derives everything from, and we understand to be Akiba in the Braita. But we still have opened the Akiba in the Mishnah, because we now have a contradiction between the two statements of Rabbi Akiba. Kashya de Rabbi Akiba, ah, de Rabbi Akiba. Uh, Rabbi Akiba in the Braita that we just said says he pays, uh, the, the rapist pays no matter what to the father, whether she had been engaged and divorced or never been engaged. Whereas our Mishnah says, if she was never engaged, then he pays the fine to the father. If she had been engaged and divorced, then he pays the fine to her. So which one is it? And the answer is, There are two traditions to Tanaim. Tanaim here in the sense of uh, memorizers, uh, these professional memorizers that they recorded all of the uh, the statements of the Tanaim, in the other definition of the sages um, who lived before 220, the sages that are mentioned in the Mishnah. So there's two traditions about what Rabbi Akiba said. All right. Now, Bishlam Rabbi Akiba de Matnitin, La'acha Gezera Shava, Mepekale, Likram, Peshate, Le Gamre. Now, Rabbi Akiba of the Mishnah, we are happy with him because he doesn't use this pasuk for a Gezera Shava to tell me about the denominations. He still, he uses the Gezera Shava for its context. The Akiva the Mishnah says, when does the father pay, when does the rapist pay the father? Only when she had never been engaged. Ashe lo orasa. If she had been engaged, then he pays her directly. Good. So we need it contextually uh, for, uh, for, uh, uh, for this law itself. Um, and we're not removing it from its, con from its context altogether. Peshate, peshat could mean plain, plain meaning, but lifshot like means to spread out, like to spread out a tablecloth. Uh, so I think the better uh, translation here is con context. Ela Rabbi Akiva de Baraita, Acha Gezera Shava Mapeke Me Peshate Le Gamre. But according to our explanation of the Baraita, and in that case, 
But he says that there's no difference between her never being uh, the, uh, engaged and her being engaged and divorced. The rapist pays the father no matter what. And so therefore, the words asher lo rasa are not used in the context at all. Instead, we just remove it altogether and use it for a gezerah shava. How could you do that? How could you go and take it out of context completely? Right? We, you know, use, uh, well, we, we, Gemara is recognizing that we often make darashot. And the darasha will add to something, right? Extra word, an extra letter. Um, even if you make use a gezerah shava, it makes sense in its context. Now we're also using it for something else. But here, you actually have to remove it from the context in or, uh, um, and only use it for a gezerah shava. And that we're not comfortable with. We're happy to add on meaning, but not to deny the contextual meaning altogether. So how could you do that? Amad of Nachman, Bar Yitzchak, Kari Ba, Asher Lo Arusa. Oh, I have a way of reading it contextually. Uh, we can change to Asher Lo Orasa Ta Arusa. Not that she had never been uh, engaged in the past, but she is not currently engaged. Asher Lo Arusa. And that would be true, right? That if she is currently Arusa, then he doesn't have to pay. Okay. Now, um, and so that way we can leave the context uh, as it is. Um, of course, we're not going to read it differently uh, according to Rav Nachman by Yitzhak. When we read Sefer Torah in, in, uh, in Bet Knesset, he just means that since there are no nikudot, and uh, uh, therefore it's, it's possible, it's legitimate, to read a word in multiple vocalizations. And so we can leave it in context and use it for Gezer Shava. so we're not completely removing it from its context. Now, we ask, Arusa Batsikilahi, hold on, if she is uh, currently engaged, and this rapist comes, he is in addition committing adultery, and he would be punished by stoning. The girl, of course, does not get punished in this case because she is she is raped, she is forced, she is not, uh, is not consens consensual. Okay, the point is that since he gets stoning, we already know the rule. We've derived it from a, a whole bunch of places that if someone gets capital punishment, they don't all they don't pay. And so we already know that he, the, the, this rapist is not going to pay the fine if she is currently engaged. And I don't need the words, Ashe lo arusa, to teach me that. Uh, so why would, uh, so you haven't answered the question yet, right? We, we still want to know, uh, the, you're taking these words out of context and they don't make sense in context at all, even if you read it, Ashe lo arusa. And so the answer is, no, we do need it in this case. I might have thought that this monetary payment is different from usual, usual uh, compensation, uh, where, yes, we know that if it's compensation and capital punishment, like if I steal something on Shabbat, then um, I only get capital punishment and I don't have to pay the compensation for what I stole. But here, it's a fine. And this fine, that's like different. This is like the four and five if I steal an ox and kill it um, on Shabbat. So uh, since I might have thought, since this is a, an extra chidush, that this is beyond regular compensation and it's a fine, that I might have thought that even you can get capital punishment and pay the fine. And therefore, the pasuk says, Asher lo arusa, um, only if she is not currently engaged, then he pays the fine. If she's currently engaged, then he's going to get capital punishment, and then he does not pay the fine. So I still need it to teach me this very principle. Good. Now we know that not everyone agrees to that principle. According to Rabbah, in fact, we, we would not exclude this case, because he said that since the Torah adds an extra new element that's not beyond compensation, one has to pay an extra fine, therefore a fine is paid along with capital punishment, and so in the case where a na'ara is actually current in, currently engaged and the man rapes her, he would get capital punishment and he would have to pay the fine. And so what the, this, this verse, what is it doing? What is its extra? And it says, you're right, there's no way we could explain Rabbi Akiva of the Braita in conjunction with Rabbah. There's no way that Rabbah could agree with Rabbi Akiva of the Braita. Rather, but he has another option. Uh, Rabat will simply follow the Biakiva of the Mishnah. And the Biakiva of the Mishnah, he had a simpler way of reading the words Asher lo orasa, that it means that he, the man, pays the fine to the father 
only if she had never been engaged. But if she was engaged, it was engaged and divorced, then he pays her herself. And that's a nice contextual reading of the of the Pesukim. And Rabbah can simply read it that way. So just like at the end of the previous stuff, we saved Rabbah. He can't be every follow everyone, but he can he has someone to follow. So too here, Rabbah has someone to follow. And we end off the daf with a short baraita that has two opinions, and we're going to argue that one opinion follows the Mishnah, and one of one fa- one opinion uh, uh, follows the baraita version of the Biakiba. So baraita reads: Who gets the fine? So one first opinion says the father gets the fine, and the Shomrim, the other opinion says she, the victim herself, she gets the fine. Now, that's the end of the Baita. We ask, Latzma, Amai, why would she get the fine? The Torah says explicitly that the father gets the fines. What are you talking about? Avichista explained that this Baraita, the whole Baraita, is talking about only a case of a woman who was divorced, uh, engaged and divorced. And that is uh, why uh, the she would get it herself. Now, what's the difference between the two opinions? And the two opinions of this Baraita are the two different Tanaim who argue on the different versions of what Rabbi Akiva said. The first one that says that the father gets it, that's the opinion of the Baraita. Whereas the one that says that she herself gets it, that's the opinion of Rabbi Akiva in the Mishnah. So here we go. We, you know, we use this as an answer before. We had a contradiction. We said, I guess there must be two Tanaim. But in fact, here we have a Braita that puts the two Tanaim back to back. Uh, next, uh, next section is going to go on a long discussion that will go till tomorrow. So we'll stop here. Baruch Adonai Lodam. Amen ve Amen.